welcome to a new episode of the brand called You. Today, we have a very, very exciting millennial entrepreneur who has founded this incredible juice company called The Raw Press. Anuj Rakhyan, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Thanks. Anuj uh, is uh, from Duke University. He spent time discovering himself in the US as an investment banker, then in consulting. And then he came back to India and decided to become an entrepreneur. Anuj is also an athlete, and he was just telling me before our interview that he had so many uh, injuries uh, that he decided that, you know, that was the right way to be able to nurture your body. So Anuj, uh, before we get into raw pressery, talk to us a little bit about your professional career and some of the key highlights. Sure. Um, again, thank you for having me. I think, I think what you guys are doing there is incredible. Um, and it gives us a chance to and I feel honored enough to tell our story. So thank you for that. Thank you. Um, born in Bombay, went to school in, in Bombay as well. And um, after Duke University, which is in North Carolina, um, spent a little time with Morgan Stanley doing in banking with Future Brand in uh, brand consulting. Mm -hmm. And uh, also spent some time in the evenings uh, running a bar. Uh, meeting people, uh, I think a lot of uh, learning over there. Mm -hmm. um, just did a lot of things when I came back to India. My father has a business in diamond trading. Um, I spent some time learning about diamond industry. Um, I worked with some companies along the way mm -hmm. just to see, you know, how manufacturing, trading, brand building was done. Um, I started my own jewelry company as well with my father uh, called Ananya Jewels still exists it's professionally managed now and um, but you know I think the the thing that I enjoy the most doing uh, on a professional level is uh, I like operations and I like building brands and um, I think the, the focus has always been on trying to organize the unorganized markets mm -hmm. so in jewelry for a long time as well I noticed that the the independent jewelers or the family jewelers made up about 97, 98% of all jewelry you know, stores in mm -hmm. India. Mm -hmm. Whereas the organized jewelers or the branded jewelers were very few. And um, I thought this was very interesting because the more unorganized a market is, there's the price discovery is very fragmented mm -hmm. and the consistency of quality is very low. Yeah. And uh, so, you know, how do we kind of build a brand that gives you know, kind of a consistent promise to the consumer because the pricing for jewelry was all over the place. Correct. So those kind of things interested me. And in a kind of a similar manner, it's a very similar thing that I'm doing maybe with the juice industry. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. So, you know, um, let's get straight into the raw press review. Um, I remember first reading about it when you launched the detox. Yes. Uh, variety of your juices in Delhi. But uh, tell us what is the meaning of cold press and what are the benefits? Sure. So um, there's three types of juices. I think it's simply put. One is, let's say, a juice that we make at home. Mm -hmm. uh, one is a juice that we buy from the store. And then let's say there's cold press juice. So what we make at home in, in what we call a mixie yeah. or a mixer or a blender yeah. in, uh, has a centrifugal uh, you know process it has a blade mm -hmm. at the bottom which is go you know moves at a very fast rotational speed mm -hmm. and with that it kind of chops the vegetable or the fruit through uh, releasing the juice what happens with this is there is a with that friction there's a minimal amount of heat mm -hmm. which affects the nutrition of, you know of the or the enzymes of of the produce mm -hmm. But there's a tremendous amount of oxygen. Okay. So what we'll find is in your homemade juice, if you've made it and you leave it on the table, it'll start frothing and yep. tearing apart. And, okay. uh, and that's why you never carry your juice with you anywhere you go. You, you know, you've made it, you have to drink it now. So that's the oxidation, which has actually reduced the shelf life. Okay. Um, that's homemade juice. When we buy a juice from a store, I don't think it's fair to even call it a juice. Mm -hmm. Um, according to FSSAI and um, all, um, all, all kind of food bodies around the world, when you write ingredients um, on a pack, you have to write them in the descending order of its composition. Mm -hmm. So the ingredient which has the maximum 
uh, within a component of, of that product has to be written first. And most of these juices will have water, then sugar, then concentrate. So really? okay. uh, never noticed that. But so if I buy a, a tetra pack of orange juice, yeah, it'll have water. Have water first. It'll have about eighty-five percent water. Wow. Then it'll have about five or six percent sugar, um, and then maybe five to six percent of concentrate. And then there could be colors or you know other uh, you know kind of additives inside it. So what you're telling me is that the juice that I buy in a tetra pack uh, is made from concentrate. It's not. It's only made from pressed concentrate. juices. It's only made from concentrate. Wow. Anything that you'll find in the market is only made from concentrate. Okay. Um, and if not concentrate, then you know um, marketing for these companies is is misleading. Mm-hmm. They'll call the concentrate uh, puree mm-hmm. or the pulp, but it's essentially they they heat that product to such a high degree to make that concentrate, just to reduce their logistics costs. That um, my guess would be a, a lot of the large companies that sell juices in tetra packs or cartons have probably never sourced a fruit; um, they just buy concentrate. So, okay. so that's the and in cold press, what happens is that we buy fruits. And then through a hydraulic pressure uh, technique, we, you know, cold press it. We smash it down without the use of any heat uh, or without any oxidation, which will be thrust through that juice. And you, so you get maximum amount of juice as a yield from the product for produce. Uh, but you get it also with a lot of integrity because you have not heated it or oxidized it. And so the the nutritional, you know, uh, kind of uh, advantage of that is much greater and obviously on a taste and aroma and all of that it's much so cold pressing was actually started in the 30s and 40s when uh, for Gershon's therapy to mm-hmm. cure cancer patients I see um, and because they saw the benefit of doing this as opposed to even making juice at home mm-hmm. so it's it's a very beneficial technique to extract juice okay it's a very similar technique uh, to conclude um, with how paper is made so if you take wood pulp mm-hmm. and you cold press it, the resultant in this case would be paper. You know, um, olive oil is made by cold pressing. Mm-hmm. So this technique was taken to fruits and okay. vegetables. Very okay. interesting. So you know, when you cold press, say, staying with orange, orange, yeah. uh, you've taken the juice out. Now some juices say that the pulp that is there in the juice is supposed to be good for you. Absolutely. But in the cold press, obviously, pulp is not there. Or is it there? It is there. It is there. It is there. And then there is a lot of uh, the uh, remainder that's left. Yes. Yes. So uh, what happens to the pulp and the remainder because the juice you've taken out? So, um, you know, orange juice is probably not the best example okay. just because... Take any example. But it's, it's interesting because uh, orange juice, we can only cold press an orange juice. I so see. even if you make an orange juice at home, mm. you can't put it through your mixer. Okay. You you know yeah, that the, yeah, the yeah. old school. Yes. This is the original cold press. Okay. You know, um, just squeezing something because there's no heat, there's no air that's okay. going through it, okay. um, and all the pulp will remain. So even if in our orange juice, you'll find that all the pulp is there. I see. The um, you're absolutely correct about when we cold press. There's a resultant at the end, and that is a very dry cake, yeah. which will have some nutrition, but most of it is is insoluble fiber. And the insoluble fiber is only used by the body for roughage. Mm-hmm. Uh, typically, 20-25 grams, you know, per day for an adult is is great for correct, you know, cleaning your uh, your your system, mm-hmm. and which we get from food anyways. Mm-hmm. Uh, so cold pressed juices, you know, one can say that they are lower in fiber than they should be, but all the soluble fiber is actually within okay. the juice. Okay. Uh, but while the fiber may be slightly limited, the pulp is intact. So pulp is always there in the juice. Okay. So, you know, you started uh, raw pressery about five, five odd years ago. Yes. Um, and today it's, uh, you know, available in 15 or 16 different cities across the country. What were some of your early challenges as you were rolling out uh, the brand? Um, there, was, there were many. Uh, uh, I think bef- five years ago, mm-hmm. I would assume that almost nobody in India knew what cold press was. Okay. And uh, I think that to some degree, we have educated people and created a category of juices that never existed. So a lot of the problems that we had then 
had to do with sourcing. Um, I think we live in a beautiful country with amazing fruits and vegetables that actually don't reach us. Mm. You know, uh, most of them get wasted. Um, people don't know how to source and how to kind of build the right relationships with the farmers. Mm. And some of our best produce is exported. So I think that the early challenge was how do we source with consistency? Mm. And, um, you know, what's good for eating may not be good for juicing. So how do you kind of get the right pH level, the right soil, the right, you know, salinity, the right bricks. And there's a lot of IP that has actually gone in in the last five years in us being able to develop these relationships. Uh, and so I think that's that's really where the, where the, 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 the journey began. Me sitting at uh, APMC markets at four in the morning every day, you know, which is about two hours away from my home. And, uh, you know, sitting with these guys who come in on their trucks and seeing how their produce comes in, uh, very shabbily packaged, very unhygienic, to really kind of going down to the farm level and working with these guys and saying, how can we improve on this? Um, because more than the juice, I think the promise that we have to people is what we're giving you is sourced, you know, ethically and sourced hygienically. Um, and we literally try and pick out the fruit or the vegetable as it falls from the tree. Uh, that's how close it is to freshness. Um, so, so that was an early challenge, but uh, but there's so many. I think mm. your whole show I can keep talking I, about. So as an yeah. entrepreneur, I'm sure. <laughs> so you know, when you started, um, you had a shelf life of two or three days. Today it's about two weeks. Have you started adding preservatives? No, obviously not. No, no. Um, and that's what always uh, kind of uh, surprises me that people would think that because there's a lot of technology, there's a lot of science out there. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, what we're doing as a young company is we're engaging with that science. Okay. And um, it's as good as, you know, let's, let's think about our refrigerator. If you put something in the refrigerator, it'll last longer. So what, what, what exactly is happening to make it last longer as opposed to if you leave it out. So there's a temperature control. Um, as we start sourcing better, uh, we understand the microbial load and the bacteria that's in the fruit and outside the fruit. Mm -hmm. Surface impurity is much better. Mm -hmm. uh, we get into more industrial systems on how to clean and how to make sure that the, the fruit itself. Then we get into certain systems of how to extract the juice in an environment which is free of bacteria mm. and pathogens. And then as we start making the juice and filling the juice in a bottle, uh, you know, we make sure that the bottle is is down to, you know, a very small level of, of any kind of impurity, mm. which we can't always see to make it perfect. Mm. Um, and so there's so many different technologies sure. that actually go into a system mm. that um, cold pressing gives you two days. Mm. But um, then you do all of these things to kind of increase the, mm. the life by reducing mm. the bacterial load. And then, you know, comes a breakthrough technology of using pressure. Okay. So um, I know that this is an important question for many people. So I'll take a little bit of yeah. time on yeah. this. Um, think about, just think about how to kill bacteria uh, by first understanding what do bacteria need. So bacteria is the invisible enemy. And typically it needs four things to survive. So one is food and we are the food. Sure. So the, the, you know, we can't take away the fruit itself. Correct. Then it needs oxygen. Um, it needs heat and it needs moisture. Mm. And um, if you also take these away, you create an environment in which there's, then they cannot, they cannot just survive on the food. Mm. So heat is actually used predominantly to kill bacteria. Okay and uh, beyond a certain temperature they can't survive so take a domestic example when we get milk delivered to our doorstep in the morning in a packet you know a pouch yeah. fresh milk yeah. the first thing that we would do is boil it. cut it open mm -hmm. put it into a uh, you know a saucepan and boil it mm -hmm. and immediately after boiling it you'll put it into the refrigerator correct right what you're doing is domestically domestically pasteurization okay. essentially you know high heat high temperature being, being put onto a liquid to kill the bacteria and then immediately cooling it down so the bacteria cannot start growing as that temperature starts reducing. We do this at home. You don't add preservatives to your milk 
and this is how you ensure that fresh milk can survive for some time so what surprises me is a lot of people jump to a lot of conclusions but these are educated people uh, who just need to go back to what we learned yeah. in school uh, and just apply those things to everyday life so what but the problem with pasteurization is that that heat also kills all the nutrition mm. and um, the covalent bonds or the 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 what makes nutrition in fruits and vegetables is more delicate than in 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 things like milk yeah so they get destroyed by heat mm. and when you take the nutrition away you take the color away you take the taste away so what we started doing is we started using pressure and with you know when i say pressure i mean um, take the take the bottom of the ocean and imagine the amount of pressure that is there at the bottom yeah. of the ocean here yeah. and multiply that by 5 okay right that's about 87000 psi uh, that's the amount of pressure that we put on each bottle after the juice is already sealed inside okay and this bottle then expands and contracts the pressure is pulsated as a frequency through very cold water and this eliminates the growth of any bacteria Amazing. now with that we get an increased shelf life because have we've created an environment in which they cannot grow mm. and we've taken them out of pressure mm. but because we've not used any significant heat the nutrition the taste everything remains okay so we are the only juice out there in the country in which 100% of the product is made from 100% of farm produce so the only juice with only fruits amazing uh, and we use science and technology to do this we would never ever add anything that would be harmful to consumers Correct. our motto is all good no bad yep i'm going to come to that and and that that's just starts with the product yeah. you know so yeah so th- thank you that, that was uh, an amazing uh, clarification that raw pressy has absolutely no preservatives so mm. you and it's not everything. just us you know i'll tell you in today's world even the tetra pack companies even there are so many different filling technologies if nobody needs to use preservatives okay. nobody okay. not even coca cola okay. you know so yeah so that i think that's just a mindset of the consumer yes saying if it is lasts long it's a, it's a, it's a fear that is it's got a hangover today and because people don't know enough they feel that that's the shortest you know uh, route to doing something okay. right it's our job to educate them yeah. so. So you know you just mentioned about all good no bad and you're building it as a brand virtually. Yeah. Uh tell us a little bit about the philosophy behind this. So actually what happened was in the early days you know this boring scientific explanation that I've just given you um uh, imagine I had to give this to everybody right and everybody asked me this well and about 15000 people per day they watch you <laughs> so i you know and in the early days you know when you're going and saying hey you know i'm cold press and hpp which is high pressure pascalization and you know and they're like okay you know nobody wants to know how much science or technology is going behind making a juice and most people will say oh you know forget it i can do this myself yeah. at home um but really you know to explain it was difficult so yeah. what we started telling people was something very simple we said look everything that's good is inside the bottle and anything that is bad right is not inside this bottle is not happening to the bottle uh so our product code or our philosophy is that it's all good it's no bad and they said ah, okay fine just tell me that you know that's what i want to know but what started happening beyond the product philosophy was it also started becoming our own little mantra you know where we said that's who we are you know and and we believe that um a lot of our consumers the ones that appreciate our product and the brand they're the ones who are saying you know we we want to be all good no bad mm. and uh, not in a goody good yeah you know uh, kind of way but just that we 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 believe this world is all good no bad and we we think that you know if you have if, if you have good friends uh, you won't keep bad company yeah. you know and if you have good thoughts you won't yeah. have bad actions Absolutely. and and so an entire language for the brand started kind of evolving from that and today our entire communication strategy is built on you know all good no bad or uh, all love no hate mm-hmm. you know uh, all, 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 all you know all fresh no, no preservatives okay. uh, things like that so okay. that's an entire language that okay. came from that. terrific so one more question on raw pressy before we move to the next segment 
you know, you've expanded into soups, smoothies and non, non, non-dairy milks. Yes. How has that experience been? And why soups? Uh... So if you, if you cold press uh, fruits, you get uh, juices. Okay. If you take all the vegetables and do the same, you will get a soup. We oh, drink a juice okay. and we eat a soup. I never thought of it, uh, but right. And essentially, it's a liquid yeah. vegetables and liquid fruits. Mm-hmm. So, and uh, we're a liquid nutrition brand, essentially. Mm-hmm. So, um, the other thing is that, you know, for me as an entrepreneur, I think we always look at how what problem can we solve. Mm-hmm. And um, I thought that there was a big problem in juice and there remains where people make juice at home. And I'm sure later we'll come to pricing and things like that, where people are making juice, which is not just inconvenient, but much more expensive to make at home Correct. and not consistent in, in everything that they do. We said that's a problem. Yeah. They can't buy it. They want to make it. How do we solve that? Let's give them something they can buy, which they usually make. Mm. Now, soup is a similar thing mm. um, that we make soup at home. But have you ever bought a soup that the same way that you make one at home? Because it's all powder, yeah. you know, and... Um, I don't want to drink powder. Mm. I don't want to think that my soup is, is a powder. I want a soup made from, from vegetables, mm. uh, you know, in the same way that I make one at home. Mm. So we made a soup uh, in a cup, um, which you can buy and you can, you know, open the lid and you can actually drink. Okay. Very similar to maybe if you've been to some of the international mm. supermarkets, Marks and Spencer, yeah. weight yeah. where you can actually pick it off a hot shelf. So we made it and then we really, you know, worked hard on the packaging and made it in such a way that you can buy it and open it and drink it, or you can actually put that packaging in a microwave directly um, and, and, and consume it. So and these are available all over the country? Yeah, so what we do is we only launch them during the winter seasons uh, for the North Market especially, uh, and in the flavors that come there. So it's, it's you know, it's, it's what we do. It's just kind of a product portfolio play. Sure. Uh, non-dairy is again that part which is a lot of um, this generation has grown up wanting to not drink milk right. and or for whatever reason, lactose intolerance sure. or vegan or planet consciousness mm-hmm. or whichever it is, taste, nutrition, yeah. anything. Yeah. And so we said, you know, there's no real good company out there that is doing this. So we went into, uh, PETA awarded us the best vegan drink um, last year for mm-hmm. our almond milk. So that's, an, that, and I think that category globally is a very, very fast growing category. We are also... Uh, launching into a protein shake, okay. uh, you know, actually in the next one month. So when you look at it, what we're really trying to do in our product portfolio is we are a liquid nutrition brand. Mm-hmm. So we use fruits and vegetables to make juices, um, to give you vitamins and minerals. Mm-hmm. And you, you know all about yeah. this. Mm-hmm. Uh, we use almonds to make uh, nut milk, mm-hmm. uh, which gives you good fat and fiber. Correct. And we use dairy and casein and milk protein isolate uh, to make a protein milkshake which will give you protein so essentially we're giving you we don't need to give you carbs because Mm -hmm. india is a carb country you close your eyes put your arm out you'll find the carb you know so so we really wanted to focus on the other food groups Mm -hmm. in a liquid format and um, so yeah the protein shake will have 18 grams of protein in a in in a single it's almost a whole day's requirement yeah it's about 60 percent for an adult it completes a growing you know kids uh requirement for the day Mm. and uh, we i believe that protein is we're very deficient in protein and uh, for the vegetarians and and you know it's very difficult Mm. also if you eat meat how much can you keep sitting down and getting all all of it so a very convenient way to actually input protein is what we're looking for. So, so we're looking at our product portfolio in that manner. Interesting. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about pricing. Sure. Um, your your pricing, um, though, has come down, but it's still much more than uh, the average juice. Yes. Um, and yet, there are some incredible benefits. Yes. So, how would you uh, explain the reason for? higher pricing there's just more content inside the product okay you know um, my question is that how does any other juice company sell a juice for 110 120 rupees a liter because there's just no content inside Mm -hmm. that Mm -hmm. and you know fruits and vegetables come at a certain cost Mm -hmm. the best way to look at this is make a juice at home and tell me what it costs because 
people don't calculate what the cost of making something at home mm-hmm. is but let's take this as an example if you buy valencia oranges which is what we make our orange juice from anywhere mm-hmm. you you will get it at in the range of about 100 120 rupees a kg mm-hmm. right and if you take 1 kg mm-hmm. uh, you can't get more than 40 45% juice from it okay so if you want to make 1 liter of juice you will need anywhere between 2 and a half to 3 kg okay right so if you that's what 300 rupees that's about 300 rupees you know our price to the consumer is less than 300 okay. rupees and that goes with giving the retailer a margin you know we build an entire cold chain for distribution yeah. you know all the packaging material all the sourcing you know all the the pressurization to be, make sure that it, it it stays alive and stays fresh when it comes to you um you know so and with with 100% you know certified oranges and all of that coming to you so really it's it's not about price it's about value mm-hmm. and for those that want to do it themselves if they do this calculation they'll realize that beyond the inconvenience and the and the you know you can make an orange juice of course you can but you still have to go get it you can make it you have to do all of that show sure. but then there are other juices which take a green juice for example you know where we put kale and spinach and dudhi and celery and amla you know and most people will not know how to concoct that and not do it so we really wanted to bring that back to people and say you know i remember waking up early in the mornings and and going to in bombay and marine drive and stuff and there were so many people walking and jogging and then drinking a wheat grass shot and drinking karele ka juice if you're diabetic or something else you can't find these things so actually the cost is very justified when you look at everything that goes behind it we are not overpriced we're not more expensive than what it takes someone to make it at home yeah and then there's another argument that people say well i can go to that juice center and i can get it so well, that's more expensive you know actually juice centers are more expensive yeah. and you don't really know what their sourcing has been how they've cleaned the fruits and the vegetables um you know i think the only thing that i would probably say is that the coconut water you know which is about 40 rupees for a coconut which we'd sell for maybe 60 rupees mm-hmm. um but you know you can't carry the coconut with you and how many of those can you keep in your fridge so we're giving you mobility and convenience um i think there's very little over here where we say that let's make a lot of money by selling something because in india that doesn't work sure. i agree you know but there's another thing that while i keep driving the fact that this is a value conscious generation india as much as we say we're paisa vasooli mm-hmm. right we're also very suspicious mm-hmm. uh you know kind of breed of people i would say because like you asked like oh the shelf life has gone up yeah. have they put something inside it now i remember as someone asking me once they said if i sold you a bottle of water mm-hmm. right just firstly how much do you pay for a bottle of water have you ever thought it's expensive no but it's water you can you can get it for free in I your house pay. right i mean but you you pay 20 rupees sometimes for a bottle of water i mean nobody's questioning the bottle of water right but if somebody gave you a bottle of mineral water which cost it 2 rupees would you buy it you would i wouldn't i would say why is it only 2 rupees yeah. you know the guy says well it's free you know the water putting inside it costs yeah. very little yeah. uh but we'd suspect that we'd say itna sasta hai to kuch milaya hoga usme you know so that's the kind of uh, uh, you know which which i i go through every day but the fact is 5 years ago people said we wouldn't make it to year 5 and we're here So actually, yeah. that's a testament to people actually realizing that our product is valuable, and there is more content inside it, and we're providing that's convenience at you know, and uh, and as we have been as we're scaling and our volume is growing, you know, basic stuff today I buy thousands and thousands of tons of fruits. I buy them at a lower price yeah. today because of the volume, sure. and I'm passing that on to consumers. So, a lo- so today, you know, but sixty five percent of a our revenues come from products which are under 80 rupees so there is that bracket you know which which has come in because of the volume yeah. so it's a growing company I, that's no no i'm sure it is i mean i'm i'm a very great uh, consumer of your products and i believe in it yeah. but one more question you know you spoke about going for a jog and people drinking karela juice there are 100 million diabetics in our country yeah. and generally it is said that they should not drink normal juice because of sugar content yes 
what about uh, your juices would they be are they suitable for diabetics so some you know uh, in the uh, so we are not allowed to make health claims by the fssc i would you and uh, no do we want to yeah but what would we did for a, lo- a long time when i was making this i was actually made the first batch of all what we call our benefits range mm-hmm. uh with nutritionists and dietitians and we thought very closely and we understand that yes the sugar content in the natural sugar your glycemic index mm-hmm. you know there's an insulin spike and yeah. all of that so we studied this we did a lot of tests around it what we found was that for a lot of people from type, even type 2 diabetes mm-hmm. they could drink our pomegranate juice i see so you know i said look i'm never going to tell people sure. this because that's not what the brand should do Agreed. but a lot of nutritionists started doing that okay. and till today we have a lot of diabetic patients because we don't add any sugar mm-hmm. uh, pomegranates is, is inherently low in very low in sugar, sugar. and very stable okay. in right in terms of the thing is india being you know kind of a diabetic capital of the yeah. world right uh, there's too many different types of people with different you know uh, kind of intensities of their diabetes so we don't want to go out there correct. and do that correct and then we started a grapefruit juice the naringin which the enzyme inside the grapefruit juice is something that diabetics can have and so grapefruit which goes at 500 600 rupees a kg is what a lot of diabetics you know will just in an inelastic way always be eating and 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 having with a little bit of black pepper mm-hmm. so we our grapefruit juice is another one which is oriented towards diabetics mm-hmm. but we can't market it I that way see. sure um and so actually in in 2020 we're going through a health study uh in in for all of our juices and we're trying to see which ones can actually help diabetics which ones can help you know different types of so immunity for vitamin c for growing kids and and we're looking to see if we can fortify some of these things to sensible. make it available for them very sensible and i think what we should say on uh, on the show is that if you do want to try raw pressery please check with your doctor once if you do want to <laughs> have raw pressery please check with your doctor yeah mm. pregnant so, women know. have our green yeah. juices their doctors tell them for the folic acid and yeah. for iron you know so our juices do that okay. a lot of people have our green juices when they have dengue uh because they're supposed to have the papaya yeah. leaf juice and all of that stuff these are things that are already right. happening right. you know um apart from some people using the juices as mixers with the yeah. alcohol mm-hmm. uh people are also using it i have tried it but i would try that <laughs> okay. um you're still very young but uh, you know there been there are failures in all our lives what has been your biggest learning from your biggest failure um i think we're we're reinventing ourselves in in every way mm-hmm. um i wouldn't say that in within this business we don't look at them as failures i think we just look at them as steps towards success yeah um so within the business i think that um the the, the thing that i've learned the most from is believing in people mm-hmm. and um, and being surrounded by the right group of people the right team um i made some early mistakes in that um and today i think it's the most important it's the most scalable way, you know thing in in my personal life as well as in my professional life i think uh, believing in people always giving them a chance also you know empathizing with them um uh, listening to them and i think just managing the energies of of different people and their expectations in in certain ways because whether it's your team whether it's investors whether it's your wife whether it's your friends mm-hmm. whether it's you know consumers i think that that has been uh, probably something that i failed at early and which i learned from and i think that i keep you know trying to become better at that fantastic anuj uh, this has been an absolutely incredible conversation i think i i personally have learned so much about the three types of juices i've always been a great believer in raw pressery and not only that but today i learned why we boil milk and why we put it in the fridge yeah. immediately after but you have such amazing knowledge i'd love to get you back again sure. to get into more details about uh, juices yeah thank you very much thank you for having me thank right. you so much thank you. thank you for listening to the brand called you podcast Be sure to visit tbcy.in to join the conversation, access show notes and discover fantastic bonus content. You can follow us on YouTube, Twitter,
Facebook and Instagram. Simply search for the brand called you. Thank you and see you next week.